Où est ma baguette Aujourd'hui, c'est Vlog Day 1083. Good morning. It's Thursday, and I'm on my way to Oni for coffee uh, and work. Gonna try and get a little bit of work done at least. I gotta finish a couple items. I got a lot of I don't know, just random stuff I gotta get done before I meet with Richard this morning, which means Gustav for you. I mean, you know, technically Gustav for me too, but I'm more concerned with my Richard time, to be honest. So that's just on the docket this morning, and then I gotta get I gotta make sure I get a bridge photo in from yesterday's Patreon poll on the disposable camera front. For those of you that wonder what I'm talking about, every time I've got these disposable cameras, and every time I fill them up, turn them into postcards, I send those postcards to my patrons, and we are on a blitz this week. So if you'd like to participate in that, jump on the Patreon link below and give it a vote because I'm gonna be throwing another one up by the end of the day. Just a friendly reminder that they're in the game. If you want to grab yourself some stickers here, I'm grabbing myself coffee and a croissant. Oh, I'm thinking about getting a juice. Their fresh squeezed juice is amazing. I tend to get the apple, orange, and carrot combo. It's a, it's a delicious combo. Tasty. Just getting some work done. I had coffee with my buddy Kathleen as well, which is nice. I'm late to see Richard. Just gonna zip over towards his place and uh, we'll get some work done hopefully this morning. I made some progress on the infographic that I'm trying to make. Basically, I keep talking about this book proposal that I'm working on and uh, it's to bookify the 20 and 20, more or less, which is something I've talked about. I think I talked about that while I was doing the 2020, and a number of you have even made comments about how you th thought it would make a good book. But in order to do that, you know, you gotta put together a proposal which makes the case that, you know, there are people out there that would be interested and would actually buy it. And it's the one out of the two books that I'm working on, the nonfiction Paris-oriented books that I'm working on right now, it's the one that I would want to do traditionally. And the main reason that I'd want to do it traditionally, I mean, I do want to have a traditionally published book at some point, no matter which one it ends up being, but the reason that I want to do this one traditionally is because I think it'd be a really good one to develop a partnership with a publisher. The whole process, I think it'd be really, really fun to produce the book live via the vlog and then partner with a publisher on that. So I think it's a really good one to do with a partner. And then also because I actually want to stay in each arrondissement for a week while I'm doing it. So I'd want to spend 20 weeks, stay in each arrondissement, take a few administrative breaks along the way, but hopefully do a deep dive for a week in each run. I mean, you could spend a month, you could do it over 20 months, but share the entire experience in my vlog, how that looks over time, we'll see. And yeah, put it together. The format of it and exactly what you put in each chapter on each arrondissement, you know, that's still a little bit in development, but I have a really, a pretty solid idea of how I'd want to put it together and how I'd want it to look. So with the proposal right now, it's partially about that, partially about the format of it, but really more is making the case that it's something that would do well. Because ultimately, I mean, this is one of the sides of art in general, but the publishing industry that I, I think those of us who where authors would like to believe that this wasn't the case, but you have to make a strong business case for any book you're gonna make, but especially for a nonfiction book. And a large part of that case that I have to make is effectively that I'm the right person for the job, I'm the right person to make this book, and that there's an existing audience for it, that there's a market for it, that extends beyond my own audience. Although, like, demonstrating that I have an audience is an incredibly important part, especially for a nonfiction book. Not that important for fiction, but very important for a nonfiction book. I also have to do the work of saying, there are other books out there that are similar that were successful, but mine's different, here's how it's different, and here's how we can capture that market, and blah, 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 blah. Which is also why it's really helpful to have Richard involved in this, because Richard has been in the publishing industry for a really long time. He's seen a lot of stuff like this and uh, you know he's a very helpful friend to have working on a project like 
creating a book proposal. So that is basically how it's all coming together. That's why I keep going and hanging out with Richard to work on this specifically. And that's why I'm dedicating as much time as I can to producing a book proposal for the 20 and 20. I just haven't really talked about it much yet because I don't know how secretive really you should be about like a book proposal, how much I should divulge about it before completing it, you know, and submitting it and having it accepted and all that. But at the end of the day, the point is to include you in the entire production process so that you get to see, you know, the actual creation of the book itself. And we do the whole thing together over time. You know, that's that's ultimately the, the scheme. I don't know if I'm supposed to be skipping ahead like I am right now, but I uh, just kind of feel like skipping ahead, so I'm going to. <laughs> So yeah, that's my story. I'm gonna go meet with Richard now for a little bit. I'll get you some Gustav footage, and then we'll see what the afternoon holds. Progress. A lot of work done. Caught up on some correspondence even. Richard's been wildly helpful. It's good. Now I just got up, my computer died. We gotta go pick up some stuff and uh, have lunch. And I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. I'm having lots of thoughts about, I, well, I, I'm having lots of thoughts about the fact that like my daily vlogging streak is nearing its end, is bittersweet. Bitter because I, I really, it's, it's quite the lifestyle change that's on the way. Proud of myself for having made it as far as I have. Like I'm really happy with a lot of what's happened, but also bitter a little bit because, you know, like I feel like I have not fully lived up to the standard that I set for myself at different times. And uh, yeah, I just feel like I could be doing a better job. Just, I think just a general feeling. We all want to improve, we all want to be better. Sweet because I, again, I am proud of what I've accomplished. I'm happy that I've made it over a thousand days and that I've been able to share this period of my life. What a crazy period of my life too, where I, you know, entered into vlogging thinking that one of these business ventures, uh, boomerang the bracelet that I was creating, like so the tech startup or the book deal that I had on the table, that one of those things was gonna go well and needing them to go well because they were kind of my last lifeline out of a desperate situation and then seeing them fall apart in real time, recording that, recording getting to Paris and all of it just and you know the, the turnaround that my life has gone through I'm really really grateful for that it wouldn't have happened without this in a way both mentally and emotionally having the creative output or the creative lifeline of, of vlogging and having people outside of the world that I was inhabiting being connected to me being connected to them them being connected to me whatever but I don't know it's just it's just it's just become a part of my identity in a way which is both good and bad and just been thinking about that a lot and looking at making some big changes here in the near future and also sweet because yeah I, I'll, I'll get some sleep hopefully actually get some rest and I desperately need it and I feel that and I'm pretty still towing the line of burning out pretty close right now and so um, uh, really really looking forward to getting a break as well but then feeling kind of guilty about that because you know I'm a workaholic and I feel like I sh should always be working and that's not good either so lots of thoughts I'll, I'll we'll process this over the next couple weeks I'm sure but kind of front of mind right now Richard's introducing me to a place called the Sando Club. I guess they do sandwiches. I have no idea. I'm so hungry. It's like 2 p.m. and I'm more than ready for lunch. And we're on, I'm on the opposite side of the road now, so I'm, I'm mildly disconnected. Anywho, I'll let you know how it is. And then I gotta figure out what I'm doing with my life this afternoon. I think I might need to wrap things up early today with the vlogging so that I can sit down and work on my computer for the rest of the afternoon. And that doesn't make very good video content, so you know, might as well just kind of wrap this up. Oh, but I do need to go get a photo of a bridge. Is this it? That's it? Oh, it's around the corner? I also need to go get a photo of a bridge for the uh, Patreon polls and put up another one of those polls today, so be on the lookout for that. I think Juan Alexandre Trois from uh, Midnight in Paris won, but I have to double check before I go take that photo. Do you already have it? Nice. Thank you. There aren't a lot of Space Invaders in the ground, but they're around. Keep your eyes both up and down. Oh, I don't know if I have that one. We're, we're getting, we're, this is turning into a, a mini Space Invader hunt, which is great, because I've been going through a little bit of a dry spell, to be honest. Score! Okay, now I'm ready for lunch.